where are silver and gold headed? Well, regardless of what happened last week and so far this year, up. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Yankee Stacking. Yes, I do believe that silver and gold are still headed up. They are going up much higher. And that's not because of me being some sort of a, uh, a silver or gold pumper, okay? I, I'm not. A, a, a pumper wants to uh, artificially inflate an asset so they can sell their holdings for a profit. You know, leave somebody else holding the bag. That ain't me, folks. Number one, I don't sell my silver and gold. Like, like I don't sell my car insurance, okay? Or my homeowner's insurance. And... And that's what precious metals are to me. They are debt, dollar, inflation, insurance. Also, if you've followed my channel for any length of time, you know I'm trying to help you get prepared for the economic crash we're seeing happen in slow motion. And I'm telling you, the rate of this catastrophe is only going to speed up in ensuing years. No, I am no pumper of physical precious metals. I'm a prepper. And I think at even a small level, everyone watching this video should be a prepper. You see physical assets, whether that's a, a, a roof over one's head, uh, food, water, land, uh, ammo, um, tools, electrical power, whatever. Physical assets are going to become so much more valuable over this decade. I can't stress the importance of them enough. Gold and silver are must-have physical assets, period. Okay, so let me just say I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have a crystal ball yet, okay? <laughs> but actually, I do have some macroeconomic experience. It, it, it was a field of study for me in college. And I really enjoy learning more and more about macro. So I'm going to give you three reasons why silver and gold prices are headed much higher. I encourage you to value silver and gold not as much by the spot price that we all get hung up on so much, right? But, but by their buying power. What other assets, goods, and services you can exchange this stuff for? So don't get hung up on spot price, please. All right, the three reasons. And I'm going to give them to you in an easy-to-remember way. Past, present, and future. Okay, let's take the past. And, and some of you have probably heard me say some of these words, but it's worth repeating. History shows us the intrinsic worth of these metals. They're not worthless rocks, okay? They're valued assets due to their unique properties and tangible usefulness. You can do things with silver and gold, guys. Gold especially has been prized primarily as a monetary metal by individuals, by nations, and to a lesser extent, an industrial metal, okay? Silver has been prized as both a monetary and industrial metal, with the latter being more prevalent right now. Yeah, it's used a lot uh, in industry. That history should not be ignored or discounted in any way, shape, or form. And if you do, you're doing that to your detriment, okay? You're, you're being foolish if you think that thousands of years of history is something that only old people value, okay? <laughs> Ageism is deadly here, people. Now, to the more uh, recent past, one only needs to look at the behavior of precious metals to see what happened under certain economic conditions. Silver and gold have almost always reacted positively during uncertain, challenging economic times, right? When the dollar is weak, precious metals strengthens. When inflation roars, so does gold and silver. When nations crumble under the weight of their debt and they have a currency reset, 
physical precious metals provide a harbor of protection. And that and that goes, you know, regardless of the historic age or the nation we're talking about or the culture, that's the history. Okay, so that's the past. Now, the present. We we saw a big decline last week in gold and silver, right? right. Gold actually has been down uh, close to 10% on the year, down about 17% from the uh, all-time high it had last August. We're talking almost a full-fledged bear market, okay? That's what's going on right now. And silver, it's pulled back too. The uh, benchmark 10-year treasury yield has gone way up. I mean, it just shot up last week, especially Thursday. The dollar strengthened a little bit and personal income, <laughs> personal income and spending numbers for the month of January went up 10%. That is huge. It just the month before, income was only up six-tenth of 1%. But why? Why is the treasury yield up? Why is the dollar, you know, getting a little boost here? Why did personal income shoot up by that much? Well, January. January was the month that we got our stimulus checks in the mail. In fact, if you take out all those stimulus checks, all the welfare, all the unemployment benefits, if you take all that out, personal income actually went down in the month of January. People actually earned less money in January. That is not how a strong economy is made. You, you don't have a strong economy when you have to print and dole out currency. No, that's a bubble. We're not getting economic growth. We're being sedated, people. And it gets worse. We had the second biggest merchandise trade deficit ever recorded in a single month, and and that's gonna go higher. Okay, we're uh, about to pass another stimulus bill. Everyone's gonna get the $1,400 checks. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people, okay? And we're gonna spend it primarily on imports, not gold and silver so much. Mm, you know, maybe some will pay off their debts, probably not. A lot of people are gonna spend it on stuff we don't make for ourselves. And, and we have more Americans unemployed than ever before. We don't have real jobs making stuff. Trade deficits have been going sky high. This is a zombie economy. And Wall Street can't seem to recognize what a zombie economy is. I don't know, maybe these zombie companies are going to have to come and suck the brains out of Wall Street before they figure this out. They, they're thinking long-term rates are going to push the Fed to act. Oh, the Fed's got to do it. They they, they got to raise interest rates. Mm -mm. No. No, it's not long-term interest rates that matter. It's the short-term interest rates that's bullish for gold and silver, okay? And I'm telling you right now, those rates are staying at zero. Jerome Powell just assured everyone that the rates aren't going up. They're, they're not going to fight the inflation battle. They had a horrible treasury auction just last Thursday. Why? Because nobody wants them. And the Fed is buying them all up. They're averaging, uh, I don't know, $120 billion a month. And well, that's what the numbers are now. We need to see what the future numbers are going to be. The Fed actually stopped reporting the weekly M2 numbers. So we don't really know what our uh, you know money supply is actually doing uh, on a weekly basis. I know it sounds like they're trying to hide something, but whatever. But here's the point. Jerome Powell doesn't think the money supply matters one bit when it comes to inflation. What would you say constitutes sound money? Well, the, the public has confidence in the currency, which they do, which the world does. Uh, that's, that's really what it comes down to, that people believe that, that the United States currency is, is um, perfectly reliable and, and stable in value. Is it diluted is, as a store of value? 
when M2 goes up by more than 25% in one year? Does the printing of more U.S. dollars somehow diminish the value of the dollars that others hold? You know, um, there was a time when uh, monetary aggregates were important determinants of inflation, and that has not been a case for a long time. So you'll see if you look back, uh, the correlation between movements in different aggregates, you mentioned M2, uh, and, and inflation uh, is just very, very low. And you see that now where inflation is at 1.4% for this year. That is the present insanity we're living in. Call it a deep fake economy that has all the appearances of growing. But in reality, it's just a massive bubble, a confidence game, just like Jerome Powell just said in that clip. A confidence game or a con game. And before I uh, finish up with the present, let me just say a word about where we are societally right now. We, I'm going to speak mostly about Americans. Americans are dominated by debt, by FOMO, by gambling, by with them. I don't know if you know what that means. What's in it for me? I want it all, and I want it now. We have accepted the lie that socialism is going to solve all our problems and that class warfare can actually be won and that it should be fought. It can't be won and it shouldn't be fought. You know, my father used to use an analogy of a boat. He said that we're all in the same boat and and if the majority are hammering at the hull of that boat with pickaxes, no amount of bailing out is going to keep us all from going down. So that brings me to the future. The Fed has no way out of this crisis, people. And in my opinion, we have passed the point of no return with regards to monetary policy. And as regards to fiscal policy, our politicians never do the right thing. It doesn't serve their selfish purpose for them to uh, pay the piper. So we are not going to return to sound money until potentially after a collapse. And that's what I see coming. The future portends a global shift away from the U.S. dollar. And I believe to a new digital currency. In my opinion, that new currency will be centrally controlled, not decentrally. It will be directly injected into our digital wallets. It'll be tracked, traced, and global in scope. I think it'll spell the end of cash, the end of uh, financial privacy, the end of our economic autonomy. Money markets will dry up around the world by the end of the week. ATMs will stop spitting bills. Federal deposit insurance will collapse. Banks will close. Mobs panic. It's going to be the end of the world. When all this happens, a global bailout is going to be needed. The dollar, as the uh, foundation for the world's economic system, is going to end. And the reset is going to be felt by every nation on the planet. Everyone. Whether that uh, international bailout that I was mentioning comes from the IMF or comes from some other entity, I don't know. But eventually, a new basket of currency is going to be created, new standard, right? And it will probably be fiat in nature again. Eventually, that'll fail. And all the while, a uh, black in gray market with barter is going to, I believe, fill the void. Eventually, it's possible that we'll return to sound money. I hope so. That will mean that it's going to be a currency that's backed by real money, gold and silver. It'll get its rightful place again. But regardless, the future of gold is bright. And you need to use this Uh, short-term pullback, in my opinion, to responsibly stack with a renewed sense of urgency and confidence.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment right down there below. And also hit the like. That helps the algorithm quite a bit. And until next time, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.